at some point. All right, so um, I need to kind of know possibly where you are in order to maybe um, explain things a bit further or um, to kind of maybe clarify certain things. So when um, you said that, like, do you know what interest rates, inflation is, um, and how they kind of interlink. Are you okay with that? Uh, I think that's where I'm struggling because these terms are actually new to me, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I see that um, this that you always talk about GDP, inflation, interest rates, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, and comparing them with other currencies, if other if let's say GDP GDP is is like the uh, the example I saw on YouTube mm-hmm. was uh, US was two point five percent on interest rate or GDP I'm not even sure mm-hmm. <laughs> because they're all just percentages and Euro was zero uh, percent and you said it should be a buy for for Euro USD I think oh I think that's interest rates yeah. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll deal with, I guess we'll deal with one thing at a time. So um, yes. so what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll deal with, for example, what is inflation, I guess, right? So one second, let me share my screen with you. One second, let me know when you can see my screen. Right. I see it. No worries. So we've got inflation. All right. And I guess what I'll do as well, I will, and I was thinking about this the other day, um, is basically writing out like um, almost like a gloss, a glossary or some terminology of what uh you know, uh, this means, I guess, because then it might put things um, in in perspective when looking at, for example, the, um, when looking at this, because this is really the, this diagram basically explains everything, but I guess if you're not too sure, I guess what inflation is then, or, you know, or, or deflation, then it still might be a bit difficult, but what we'll do is inf- we'll, we'll, we'll kind of break it down where you've got inflation, right? Is basically prices, right? Okay. Right. And, the inflation part is is the higher the price, or oh, oh, sorry, the higher the inflation, yeah, the more uh, devalued, right? The more devalued the currency is, or the more depreciating it is, right? Uh, ED, right? That's TED, sorry. The more depreciated, yeah? So if if you've got inflation at, you know, let's say, for example, 1%, yeah? Or 3%, which currency has, is, is, is depreciated the most? Uh, the one that has three percent. Exactly, that's exactly it. And as you go along the scale, yeah, five percent is depreciated more than three percent, etc. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so think about you know what a devalued or a depreciated currency is. It's basically just a weak currency. So it, and maybe, and I think the the, the 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 where a lot of traders get um, confused or try to maybe get their head around is the fact that because it, the word inflation, you would think that it's actually an increase in value, but yes. it's actually, it's actually the opposite. 
Yeah. Right. So 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 deflation. All right. So let me get this. Inflation means uh, the currency is not doing well, right? Um, well, they have there, there's a central bank target of two percent. This is this is where you know inflation is acceptable. Yeah. So every year the central bank has a target. You'll see here. So the central bank has a target of two percent. Every central bank around the world. That's their inflation goal. So just by default, currencies are supposed to depreciate by two percent every year. That's that's the, that's the aim anyway. Yeah, they're supposed to be 2% inflation, meaning that if the central banks had their way, your money would buy 2% less every single year. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, sounds, it, sounds, it sounds strange, isn't it? Like, like why? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, the why thing is, is that? I'm thinking, I'm thinking here in South Africa, we used to buy bread, I think, 2 rand 50, and mm -hmm. today it's 14 rand 50. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. To, exactly. And that's basically de devaluing the currency, right? Because it costs more of that currency mm -hmm. to buy um bread. To buy, to buy bread, right? Exactly. To buy any item. That's exactly what inflation out now, now inflation and deflation or the value of the currency, yeah, is is very difficult to control extremely difficult to control and they, they 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 can only do that by hiking holding or cutting interest rates right but before we get to interest rates right e r e s t rates before we get to rates oop, i'm on a i'm on a trackpad so it's a bit difficult to talk about um to, to write sometimes um so let's deal with deflation before we get into yeah so inflation yeah the, the goal right is two percent yeah but inflation just means that your currency is being it's it's an acceptable depreciation so two percent is acceptable depreciation or acceptable devaluation that's the goal yeah now deflation right is basically negative inflation because if if the higher remember we've already sorted that you know the higher inflation goes the more devalued the currency the, the the same is true for deflation so as prices go towards zero or go towards minus one percent yeah or go towards minus three percent yeah it's getting more expensive yeah because if this is you know devalued yeah and depreciating then this now is getting actually it is this is appreciating right okay Yeah, so this is appreciating. So each time you see prices go from minus zero to minus one or from minus one to minus three, yeah, it's getting, it's, it's appreciating in value or getting more expensive. All right, yeah. Yeah, so this is, I guess the currency is getting cheaper. If you want to, you know, whatever, whatever the terminology, I guess, to use for being devalued, weaker, cheaper, depreciating, the opposite would be true for um, depreciation if you're looking at a negative scale. So let me go back to here. So the higher inflation is basically the weaker the currency. The, 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 the more prices go towards deflation, which should mean that, in fact, it's the opposite, right? It should be getting more and more expensive, yeah? So you're getting further away from actually the central bank target. Mm, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, because they want a 2% expensive. Exactly. It's getting more expensive, yeah? Now, 
the the way to con- to, to control in, um, inflation, yeah, the way that right, that central banks around the world they they compete is by monetary policy, yeah, and so monetary policy. Um, uh, what you want to do is if your currency is getting is getting weaker. So, for example, let's say for example it's at three percent, yeah. So your currency is getting weaker and weaker. And it's, it's rising, going from two to three, three to four, four to five. What you want to do is you want to make it, you want to create demand, yeah, for that currency to make it more attractive so that it doesn't become too weak. Is that correct? Is it, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes yeah? sense. Right. So the way that you do that, the way that central banks have to do that is by giving you a higher interest rate. You have to make it more attractive. So um, one second, let me just get my uh, annotate and I'll get this. Yeah. Uh, Draw. Can I draw on this? Right. So interest rates, the higher the interest rate is the more attractive Yeah, that's this is the desired effect, and the more attractive something in is, is the more what demand there should be for that currency, right? Uh-huh. Because if you go down the high street <clears throat> and you see that one bank is offering you maybe <clears throat> you know three percent interest rate, yeah, or another bank is going to offer you, let's say for example six percent interest rate, where are you putting your money? Uh, 6% return. There you go. There you go. As the consumer, right, that is more attractive than this, right? So then if if you, you're hiking interest rates, so as, you, as inflation is going higher towards the 4%, 5%, and if you offer a higher interest rate, that should have the desired effect of making your currency more attractive and if a currency becomes more attractive then it should become more expensive right it should become more expensive because competition there's more demand for it it can't continue to get weaker can it and exactly it has to become you know it, it, the desired effect is that people will start to pile into that currency and then that currency becomes more in demand and then inflation because if we know that this is, you know, devalue, right, the higher this goes, yeah, devalued, in fact, it increases the value of that currency, therefore increasing inflation, or sorry, decreasing inflation. So from four to three, from three to two, yeah. So this, this is increasing in value, yeah. So this is yeah. more appreciating. Yep. That's the desired effect of hiking interest rates when inflation is above the 2% target. Now, now you understand. You get why yeah, they have I to understand. do it now. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Mm, mm. Yeah, that is, that is literally it. Yeah. So, okay. but, but, but when, but when, so, so if you understand that, then it works in the exact opposite way when we talk about deflation. Deflation. Right. So deflation, let's, let's tackle deflation. Deflation is when a currency is, um, oh, is a, 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 yeah, is more expensive, right? It's appreciating. All right, so it's expensive and it's appreciating. Yep. Appreciating, right? Now, if the currency is getting too expensive and is appreciating oh. too much, then yeah. what do you have to do? If this is if this is attractive, then you have to make it less attractive or unattractive. Yeah. So that means your money is not giving any interest. 
it's actually charging. Exactly. Uh, you have to make it unattractive for people so that, because if it's too expensive, you want people to come out of the currency, right? You don't want them to pile into the currency because it's too expensive. You want them to come out. You want to disincentivize them, you know, to hold the currency. Yeah. So you want to make it unattractive yeah. and you make it unattractive by charging them. Whereas before, you know, you would say, all right, then I want something with 6% inflation. Which one would, yeah. you, would you rather not? I guess the lesser of two evils would be, you know, would you rather uh, put your money in a bank that's going to charge you 1% or 2% or 3%? Which one would you rather put your money in the bank? Would you rather put your money in the bank and charge you? Exactly. You'd rather put your money exactly the less the lesser of two evils, right? So it's the so Hmm. the more the more uh, the more that that negative interest rates go into the negative, is the less is 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 the more unattractive or the less attractive this becomes, and then you don't get traders who or, or investors who want to even use that currency therefore if something's then expensive it be, should become the effect is that it should become less expensive because everyone doesn't want no one wants to use it so yeah. then as it as it goes from three minus three to minus two to minus one what is actually happening it's not appreciating it's actually doing what it's depreciating it's Exactly. It's devalued. Exactly. It's going closer towards that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Interesting. All right. That's the way it, it, the economics works. That is exactly it. That is the economics. And this is what, and this is what, um, uh, you know, it, it amazes me, Simon. The, you know, once, once you know this stuff and know how to apply it, it amazes me. How are you, a, how is anyone a Forex trader, call themselves a Forex trader, currency trader, and, th- and they don't know this? Yeah, yeah this, <laughs> this is amazing uh, huh. information, though. Yeah. It, I really don't know how we survive, eh? Once you know this stuff, you'll never look back. To just look at the technical analysis and say, oh, because the price is here or price is there, and we've got this price action, and this is the reason why prices, you know, prices will go higher or lower in the future, is absolute nonsense. How can anyone say that? Yeah, and 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 you don't know this. The central banks are the ones that are controlling the valuation of the currency. They're not looking at price action. They're not looking at a price chart. This yeah, that's true. exactly this is what is 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 moving price, and if you can understand this, yeah, and understand what when 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 a bank when a central bank says okay they're going into negative interest rates, for example, the Bank of England the other day, right? We said they said yeah. there was rumors that it was going into negative interest rates. So what does that actually say about the value of the currency? What are they concerned with? It's getting more expensive. There you go. That's exactly. And look what the pound has been doing against the dollar, right? If you look at a price chart right now, today is what the twentieth, the twentieth of um, or the nineteenth is nineteenth or twentieth day. Uh, I think it's the nineteenth. Anyway, um, sorry, you, you know what it is. Nineteenth. Right, nineteenth of January today. And if you look at where the, the pound dollar is, the pound has appreciated against the dollar. Yeah. And let's go. Now that you understand that, now that you understand this, do you want to take a picture of that, by the way? Take a screenshot of that so that you've um, you've got something to refer to. Yeah. And we'll go. Actually, uh, hold down some notes, but it will also still do the still, still work. I mean, let me just take a picture. Yeah. No worries. Let me know when you've taken a picture of it. Because then yeah. once you once you understand this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to trading economics. Yeah. And we are going to see this actually play out in real life. Yeah. Because then you can start to forecast. You can actually start to forecast um, where uh, uh, banks 
or what they think the value of a currency should be, literally just based off of inflation and or, or what a central bank is doing with, with interest rates. Yeah. So if, an in, if, if a central bank is talking about cutting interest rates, then it means that they are concerned with what an, an appreciating currency or a depreciate or, or, an, or depreciating currency. If they're cutting interest, if they're cutting rates, yeah. What's oh, happening? Yeah. What's happening to the currency? Is it appreciating or is it depreciating? Uh, it's depreciating. Exactly. That uh, that's exactly it. Yeah, and and a depreciating. Um, oh, sorry. Apologies. No, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not sorry it oh, okay. actually it's actually appreciating right it's actually appreciating because think about it if this is devalued right and even look, look at that even myself right this is how this is the terminology oh yeah this yeah, is remember yeah. this is increased right, this yeah. is increasing in 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 value yeah then then we have um they're worried about the, the currency getting more expensive yeah as prices go into the negative, yes. it's getting more and more and more expensive. So by cutting rates, they're trying to make it unattractive if they're going to cut rates or negative rates so that they can um, boost inflation and make it weaker or make it devalued. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so, so that is... You can understand now when you when you're reading an article, what the central bank actually thinks, yeah, of the valuation of the currency if <clears throat> they are trying to cut rates. In the same way, if they're hiking rates, yeah, they are concerned with the fact that the currency is being devalued. Yeah is being devalued, that's exactly it, it's yeah. devaluing too much, that's exactly it. So they have to look to high crates. So what does that information yeah. give us? If the central bank is saying, I want to high crates, yeah, they start to look to high crates, yeah, then you understand that the currency should have been, um, sorry, been going down in value. That's what should have been happening, right? Because it will boost inflation as prices go down, then what is happening to, um, to, 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 to what should happen to inflation? Inflation should go higher, right? Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because remember, this sense. is being devalued on a price chart. It's going lower and lower and lower, which means, in fact, inflation should be going higher and higher and higher as a result of prices going down. Is that correct? You think that yeah and if it's and if and if something is getting more expensive yeah then that currency should be doing going in what direction going up exactly that's exactly it yeah that's it and so we can we can we can look at this now we can look at this and we can now say all right let's uh, I'm not going to take this off. I'm going to take the uh, the drawings off now. Um, so we can now say, all right, then how does that look actually in real life? In real life. Let's see how that looks. So let's go to trading economics and let's go to, um, let's go to the United States. Now, if you go to the currency, the currency has been getting weaker and weaker, yeah? So since since March, March 2020, when we had a high of 102 to now, where we've got a dollar valuation of 90. So that's basically depreciated, correct? Yes. Been depreci depreciating. This is what inflation is. Inflation is, you know, a weaker currency, a cheaper currency, etc. So again, I, I get the confusion because when you say inflation, it's almost like what well, is increased in value. Inflation increase. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is again maybe the, the word, the, the the terminology, the trickery that they use to maybe confuse traders. But once you get your head around it, then you'll understand mm -hmm. it, right? So 
that, that price has gone down in value, mm-hmm. so depreciated, which means that inflation should have done what? It should go higher, shouldn't it? It should go from you know, from 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 one to two to two to three. That's the trajectory that you should see, correct? Yes, to try to make it more e- attractive. Exactly. No, 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 no. Don't 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 do it. Don't do interest rates yet. We're just talking about oh, inflation. Okay. Yeah, just inflation. focus on inflation. Yeah. yeah. So inflation should have done what? So inflation should do what? As prices are going down, exactly. Inflation should go from if it was at zero, it should go from zero to one, one to two, two to three. Yeah. Yeah, that's what this that's what should happen here. Yeah. So this if if let me just get my uh, drawing tool. So the effect should be, let's say just to let's say for argument's sake, inflation was a zero percent here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Down here, it should be somewhere maybe closer to two percent. That's the theory, correct? That's what inflation yeah. should be. Yeah. So positive two. So if that's the theory, yeah, then let's go to a, uh, let's go to inflation and let's see exactly if the theory is correct. So we go to. We're going to inflation or interest rate. Inflation rate, rate. there you go, inflation rate. Okay. So look what's happened since April or March 2020. What's happened? The inflation numbers have gone up. There you go. See? There you are. Yeah. So the fundamentals work, right? It, the fundamentals do work. Yeah. Well, I say they do work. Even, even if it wasn't, that's the that's what the mechanics of the um of inflation does to prices. And that's a desired effect of lower uh lower prices or what should happen on inflation. Yeah. Yeah. So lower prices mean should mean higher inflation. And let's look at the other way around now. Yeah. So let's look at the other way around. So the other way around would be would be deflation, correct? Yeah. Right. So deflation. As a reminder, remind me what deflation is. So is it uh, is it when a country when a currency gets more expensive actually absolutely so it's getting more expensive it's appreciating in value yeah mm-hmm. which means mm-hmm. then the on, a, going up. on a price chart there you go the price should go higher that's what we should see as yes. we go deeper into that yep yeah, that's what we should see so let's see if that theory is correct or well, recently Let's go to the euro. Let's go to the euro. And let's go to inflation. Ah, and what have we seen? Negative interest rate. Ne- negative inflation, sorry. There you go. Negative inflation. Yep. And a bit of an increase, but you can see the trajectory was... It's going down. There you go. Yeah. So then you revert. So so you know now the relationship between inflation and interest rates. So if you now read um, uh, an article, a news article, where the central bank, again, is worried about, is looking to cut rates, yeah. then the, the effect is to try to weaken the currency. To make it unattractive. Exactly, to make it unattractive. If they're looking to high crates, then they're trying to make it attractive. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. So cutting rates means it's on deflation. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. And hiking rates, it means it's devalued. They're trying to make it... Exactly, inflation, that's exactly it. Yes. Yeah. So... Inflation is a leading indicator as to what the central bank has to do. And let me note that down, sorry. Yeah. Inflation is the leading indicator. Yeah. Inflation is the leading indicator for central banks. 
Yeah. So inflation is one. The other leading indicator is uh, GDP. Yeah. So now we know um, inflation. And by the way, we didn't cover, we didn't cover actually quantitative easing, but just in a nutshell, the reason why quantitative easing is in this, this quadrant, yeah, or this half of, um, of the chart is because QE, quantitative easing or central bank, you know, intervention has the desired effect of basically uh, weakening a currency or making it unattractive by printing more of it. Yeah. So, money. yeah, so by, by, by printing more money, they're devaluing the currency in another way. Yeah. Yes. So just so just think about think about it like this. If you have, and I think the best way I can kind of think about it is this: is if you have, let's say, a limited edition, I don't know, anything. It could be you know trainers. Same. It could be a car, etc. Then all of a sudden, that that limited edition car or pair of trainers or watch, yeah, they start to make. 10, 15, 20 of those, 50 of those, 100 of those, what does that do to the valuation of that, uh, that, that item? It goes down. There you go. Yeah. So that's basically what the central banks are doing with money. Yeah. They, I mean, it's not exactly the same to be fair, but the, the effect of that by increasing, you know, the money supply by buying their own debts and things like that, yeah, by printing money out of thin air, it has the effect of devaluing the currency. currency. Exactly. And if they're devaluing, that should counter deflation because deflation is when a current currency is expensive. So that should make, you know, increase yeah. inflation. There you go. And it should want to do this. Yeah, because this is remember where, where devaluation is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is like what, what central banks do as a last resort. Yeah. Or in, you know, in tandem with cutting interest rates into, for example, the negative, the negative, et cetera. Yeah. So let's look at, for example, let's look at the, the, the Japanese yen. Yeah. As an example. So the Japanese yen or the dollar yen. I'll test your knowledge now. So the dollar yen currency pair, yeah, is now is is it's been doing this over the past year. Yeah. So let's, in fact, let's go to the. No, well, actually, not, let's not go to it yet. So yeah. if this has been happening with the dollar yen, yeah, the question is is from an inflation or you know from a from, from from an inflation perspective or deflation perspective what is the japanese yen likely to be in so is it is it is is is, is, is it supposed is it supposed to be in the inflation area or is it likely to be in the deflation area <laughs> can you start with the the usd first or no no with the, with the yen with the yen just with, oh okay with the yen, yes uh let's say it's going up right so if it's going up that means it's in deflation there you go brilliant past past the flying colors that's exactly it <laughs> because the yen is the base i'm sorry the quote currency meaning that it's it's getting more expensive the dollar is getting you know less expensive inflation right so you would think mm -hmm. if you was to look at inflation yeah if you were to look at inflation or deflation, where would it be? And it would be in this half of the um, of the quadrant, right? So let's let's yeah. test that theory out. Yeah, let's see what that if that if that theory is correct. So clear all drawings. So inflation should be in the negative. Right, inflation um, should be it. The, the trend should be to the downside, whether it's negative or yeah. not. But it should be getting more and more expensive from in, from you know a, an inflation measurement perspective correct so let's yeah. go to so you should see something like this with the japanese yen yeah 
Japanese. Right, something similar. So let's go to Japan. Let's go to inflation. Ta da! Yeah. There you go. Nailed it. There you go. There you are. All right. So it's almost up is down and black is white, <laughs> you know, when, when, it, when it comes yeah. to understanding it. But once you understand it, then it's now it's just applying it because now we can go back to looking at, like I said, news articles and we can see, we can, we can read it in one of two ways. We can say, all right, then inflation is, if inflation is going down, yeah, I mean, I, sh I should I should really say inflation. Yeah, if, if exactly inflation is inflating, let's say. Yeah. So it's going from the trend is necessarily going from one to two to three. What are the central bank likely to do with interest with, with interest rates? They're going to hike interest. There you, there you go. That's it. And if inflation or you know is deflating. I guess going towards the deflation, going towards the negative, then you know that they're going to do the opposite cut rates. And if they're happy with where inflation is, which is the 2% goal, this is the central bank target, then they just hold rates. That's it. And if they hold rates, and this is where now we can start to look for divergences or convergences. Yeah. So now we're going to take it to another level. The next level now is is the interest rate cycle so let's say for example let's look at diverging interest rates so we know that if a central bank is looking to hike rates so they make they're trying to make it more attractive yeah, yeah. and the cent another central bank is cutting rates so they're making it unattractive the money is going to flow into, let's say, for example, the, the high, exactly the higher interest rates. If that's 1%, and this is, for example, minus 1%, yeah, they got, they're cutting, yeah? Now, it gets, it's, and this is another thing where traders may, may get a bit confused, right? So just because a central bank has a higher interest rate, let's say, for example, one central bank has, uh, let me just clear this. So if one, current, if one country, yeah, has an interest rate at the moment of, let's say, 5%, but another central bank has an interest rate of 1%, yeah? This is, this is in this quadrant here now, yeah, in the positive territory. Now, if this central bank... Central Bank B, and this is Central Bank A. If Central Bank A, yeah, are looking to potentially cut rates, let's just say they wanted to cut rates, but Central Bank B are looking to hike rates, yeah, for some reason, what do you think would happen to the price? What would you think would happen to prices? Would prices increase, yeah, or, or, or increase in value if they're looking to high crates? Or well, I guess the question should be, okay. the question should be, where would you put your money? Would you continue to put it in the higher interest rate one or would you put it in the, lower interest rate one if these guys are cutting rates and these guys are hiking rates uh central bank b yeah exactly exactly that is exactly it yeah. it's always putting your money in the currency that is looking to make it more attractive by increasing rates No matter where, and I guess this is this is a bit, you know, this is a bit of, a, of an extreme uh, example because 
it depends on obviously what um uh you know the, uh, in real life this does happen but it's quite rare but the, the the point is is that you always want to put your money in the central bank that is hiking rates no matter what the interest rate may be yeah yeah it's always the hiking that is the most attractive but most most traders would say all right then well i'm putting you know the the, the fact that the um and even if for example let's say for example they were holding rates so let's not say they're cutting rates let's say they're holding rates yeah so they're holding rates but these guys are hiking rates where would you put your money still where would you put your money um, the one that's trying to make it attractive because you think go. it's going to go up exactly so that's it. and 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 that is the, that is the key most traders would look at that and go well you know well, I'm still going to put my money in the higher interest rate no you have to put your money in the one that is appreciating this one staying still this one is going from 1 to 2 to 2 to 3 potentially so this one is still the one to actually buy not just because this is the higher interest rate that you have to put your money in the higher interest rate one if these guys are holding but these guys are hiking put your money in the hiking of the interest rate that that one there the lower interest rate one yeah yeah that makes sense yeah so so now that we understand inflation and interest rates yeah and the relationship between the two then we have to throw gdp in the mix gdp right gross domestic product so in a uh sorry do you know what simon give me literally uh a, f- a minute or two yeah give me a minute or two i just want to got to do something quickly yeah Okay. Yeah, no. All right. Okay. No worries. I'll just move the mic for about two minutes. All right. Okay. All right. Bye. You're right, Simon. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. So now we're going to move over to GDP. Yeah. And. GDP. GDP uh let's go to GDP so gross domestic product is uh so we've 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 got an interest rate cycle yeah so and this ties into GDP so when we have a, a cut in interest rates yeah that usually and typically will signal a contraction a recession or a bust or slump phase of the gdp cycle or the business cycle yeah gdp's business cycle yeah and when we have when 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 economies are hiking rates typically that is associated with recovery expansion you know growth growth boom phase of the of the economy and when uh uh central banks are holding interest rates they are satisfied with the economy yeah they have a wait and see approach or the economy is not too hot not too cold okay that's the relationship yeah so you saw during the coronavirus last year that all central banks were doing what to rates were they um, cutting rates or were they net fundamentals Sorry? I was not even looking at fundamentals cuz I was clueless. <laughs> what okay, what when when take a, take a guess then. Take a guess. As you were going into uh, recession, what what do you think the central banks were doing? I think maybe hiking rates or why would they hike oh, rates? I they just were cut. Yeah. <laughs> We've gone into a recession, right? <laughs> We've gone uh, into a yeah. recession. Yeah, recession. recession contract was it even a way yeah right so exactly but i can i can show you that on you know on on trading economics yeah but take my word for it they were cutting rates they've been cutting rates ah uh, yeah 
I only saw because I was only trading Nasdaq at that time. Right. So Nasdaq also dropped hard. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, but but definitely, if if we understand that this is typically what happens during the economic phases, so this is you know this is the GDP phase. Yeah, we understand now that this is what typically should happen, right? So mm-hmm. central banks tend to hike rates when they're we're in the recovery, expansion, or the boom phase. So they were doing this basically. Yeah. So yeah. so. When it comes to um, a the, the question as to why do they do this? Why do they cut rates during this um, this phase? Right, and it's because if if cutting rate cutting rates is associated with what appreciation or depreciation is the currency getting more expensive or is it getting cheaper or devalued? Uh, it's when it's getting more expensive. Ah, exactly. Right. Expensive. Brilliant. Now, in a recession, in a recession, yeah, or during the bad times, you want to actually have a devalued currency. So you want to have a cheap currency and you want your currency to be devalued. The reason why that is, the reason that is, is because you want to have a competitive exchange rate. Think about me and you, we're countries or we're shops. Yeah, we're the shop of, I'm the shop of, you know, Leon and you're the shop of Simon. If we're both selling or provide it, we're saying they're selling the same item or we're providing the same service, the, the, the person or the country with the cheaper currency or the devalued currency is going to sell more, aren't they? They're going to export more. Yeah. Mm. Why would anyone go to you, go to you if you have an if you sell the same service as me or you provide the same service as me and yours is more expensive? Yeah. So having an expensive currency, sense. exactly. Having an expensive currency mm. is not good during the bad times. It's not good during the bad times. So a devalued currency is actually desirable. This is the effect that they want. And this is the reason why they cut rates during the bad times. Yeah. Make sense? That's it. That's, this is economics. This is what it is. It's funny because we, we do, we get, (laughs) we, 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 we think to ourselves, we try to, you know, I think it's the the terminology and the words of things, but once we figure this stuff out and we know the relationships, then we can extrapolate everything out and then we can see why things make sense. So then let's look at the opposite now. Yeah. So let's look at the opposite in the recovery when there's lots of growth and there's expansion of the boom phase. Yeah central banks will tend to high rates. Again, the question is, is why? Because it's cheaper, it's attractive. Yeah, all right. So as we're coming out of, as we're coming out of a, a recession, your currency should be devalued, yeah? Huh? Then what happens is, as your currency devalues, yeah, you want to make it more attractive by hiking rates. Yes. Yeah, so as you come out of the economic cycle, one of the things you want to do is you want to draw current people back into your economy, right? You want businesses to come back to, you know, your country. <clears throat> and the way that you do that is providing higher interest rates, more of a return. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Exactly. So then that's why um, typically hikes are associated with the recovery phase because you want to draw demand from international investors in to your country or back into your country, save as you want people to use your currency, hold your currency because 
you want the desired effect is to make it more attractive. The country, oh, attractive, AC. Yeah. Yeah. Attract. So that is the reason why interest rates tend to hike or go in a hiking cycle during the recovery phase or just after the bust or slump phase, as we know, you know, you have phases, right? So it goes like that, where you have, you know, the, the, the contraction phase, the recession phase, the bust or slump, recovery, expansion, then the boom, and then it keeps going back to the contraction again. So we're back here again, and then it just repeats. Yeah. Yeah. So as we're going through the recovery phase in, you know, after we've had a devaluation, inflation should be what? Inflation should be increasing and going higher. Therefore, if it's above the 2% target, you want to, you know, you want to stop the devaluation of that currency by doing what? By increasing or hiking interest rates. So it's a balancing act. They're trying to yeah. balance inflation. Not They don't want it too hot and they don't want it too cold. Yeah. You know, I understand. Yep. And now that you understand that, Simon, everything now, <laughs> everything now will make so much sense when you read, you know, Bloomberg articles from central bankers who start to talk about um, uh, you know, uh, interest rates, inflation, and GDP. So, if again, if 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 a central bank is looking to uh, high rates, we know that they're trying to make it more attractive. And in fact, we potentially are in the recovery, expansion, boom phase. Whereas, if a central bank is looking to cut rates that the country may be trying to avoid contraction, recession, or bust or slump. And those are what you know it is divergence trades, right? So one is growing and one is shrinking. One is cutting rates, one is, one is uh, hiking rates. Yeah. And so you buy the one that is more attractive and you sell the one that is unattractive. Yeah. That's it. That's, what, that's, all what, that's, that's all we do. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That is economics 101. This is what they, I guess they, they I suppose they try to teach you at school, <laughs> but um, they te maybe they teach it in a certain way that is a bit confusing. I, I've had economics, you know, students, mm -hmm. um, university students that have said, you know, to me that, you know, in, in economics, in an economics uh, course, it was never as clear as this. Yeah. But this is yeah, it. for sure. And there's a lot to know. There's a, there's a lot to learn with economics, and I think this is one of the other things with fundamental analysis is that you can obviously go off into so many different areas and different tangents. But once you focus on on the foundation, on what you know to be true, and how to apply what you know to be true to currencies, this is it. Yeah, it actually makes a lot more sense of why things have been just. Uh, getting more expensive here. Um, like an example, like I made, um, loaf of bread was two hundred fifty. Later on during the years, it's now fourteen rand. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like connecting all the dots now. Yeah, yeah. This is it. Beyond this, beyond this, everything else is like a bonus. You know what I mean? If you just understand the relationship between interest rates, inflation and GDP, those three main things, those three core pillars of currency valuation, once you understand that and you grasp that, then you'll always be ahead of the curve at least. Yeah, and sometimes it's not gonna be clear, right? Sometimes you're gonna have countries that are doing all the same thing. They're all gonna be cutting rates. They're all gonna be hiking rates, yeah? It just happens. Yeah. In, in, in the world that we're in, but there are still divergences there and there are going to be divergences there. And once you spot those divergences or convergences, then that's when you act. Yeah. 
if you can't see anything or, you know, everything's on the same playing field, then unfortunately you have to kind of sit out. The money is made. Like money isn't made. Yes, the opportunity to make money is there every single day, every single minute, every single second. There's an opportunity to, to make money. You can just buy. But the, op- the right opportunity doesn't come around all of the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And this is what we do in in not just currencies. You need to if you want to trade for example oil. Yeah, if you want to trade copper, if you want to trade bonds, if you want to trade the stock market, whatever market you're in, you need to understand the fundamentals behind that asset class and what typically drives people and investors and big money into and out of that um that 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 asset class that is what fundamental analysis is all right and i was it's funny because i was thinking about this the other the other the other day as i was explaining something similar to um uh, another trader and you know if you let's say for example you, you you invest in property right or you invest in cars, let's say, yeah? Let's say you're, yeah. you're, invest, you're investing in cars. You don't go to a chart to find the price of, you know, the average price of, of, of a car or plot, you know, the price of a Lamborghini over the past, you know, 20, 30, 40 years to decide whether you want to buy a, you know, a, a new Lamborghini today or a Ford or, a, you know what I mean, or an Audi or a BMW, do you? You just don't do that. No, you don't do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You would look at what is known as what the fundamentals, right? So you you instinctively look to see whether that car or that brand is of value. Yeah. So you go there and you say, all right, then you know the person is selling it to you. You look at you look at the engine size. You look at the the age. You look at the model. You look at the color. You look at the you know the condition of the car. That's all fundamental analysis from what would make you attracted to that car and what makes that car either expensive, fair value, or actually a bargain, right? It's nothing yes. to do with, with looking at, you know, a car, on a, you know, the, the, the price of a car on a price chart. You wouldn't make that decision in real life. You wouldn't, you wouldn't invest in property doing that same thing, would you? You don't. You look at the condition of the house, if it has subsidence, if the area is it a good area, is it high crime? Is it, you know, is it a, 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 an area that's being gentrified and regeneration in the area? Is it good transport links, good schools? You know what I mean? Like, that's what yeah. you look at. That's the fundamentals. That's the reason why people get involved and buy property. Yet, people will totally disregard that and go, you know what? I don't care. Like, 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 like they'll say, Interest rates, inflation, GDP doesn't work. Yeah, fundamentals don't work. So I'm just going to go look at a price chart to determine whether, and it's nonsense because you don't do it in real life. No Mm -hmm. investor does that. But people do, you know, retail traders do that in their thousands every single day to make buying and selling decisions. You could not be successful in real life looking at price action. I don't care, you know, that, and then there is an argument you could say, obviously, there's the argument of past performance, you know, past areas of, su- of support and resistance and supply and demand and past patterns. I get it 100%. Yeah, I get that part of things. But mm-hmm. even if you're a proponent, and it's never one or the other, because we're not, we're not one or the other, right? We're, we're, we use both. But the point is, is that yeah. uh, 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 the, the point I'm trying to make, I guess, is this, is looking at technical analysis as your reason to buy or sell something that should not be it it should be okay i want to go long or short on this currency pair because the central bank is doing this inflation is doing that gdp is doing this yes. that is and the first and going. foremost and then that's exactly it. then you look for the recurring buying pattern or selling pattern on a price chart to manage your trade, to place your um, 
your your you know you, to do your risk management to place your stop loss to look at your profit targets it shouldn't be the other way around you shouldn't be looking at a price chart and going we're at a demand zone now i think i want to be a buyer like no <laughs> you know what i mean because you have no idea what the central bank is doing or what's coming down the line, whether we're in a risk on or risk off environment, you know, if money's going towards safe haven or commodity currency, you have no idea. How can you make yeah, the video that it? made it clear? The video that makes, uh, that makes it clear is the one that you left on YouTube where you started dumping Euro throughout the year yeah. and yeah. just avoiding the, the demand yeah. zones and just it, taking it, the supply exactly. zones. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. Same thing with gold, gold and silver last year. All I did was buy at demand zones last year for silver. Yeah. I was not looking to I was not looking at supply zones. And that's trend trading. And that, yeah, exactly, exactly. that is trend trading 110%. We can predict the yeah. trend, we can predict trends or, or the likelihood of trends without even looking at a price chart. Yeah. By just reading what the central banks are thinking, the smartest guys in the room, or smart and smartest women, yeah, in the room are saying in their central bank statements. They say we're looking to cut rates. Instantly, instantly, what should you be doing? What should you be doing with that currency? If, if, they're, cutting rates, rates. if they're cutting rates, should you be buying that currency or should you be selling that currency? You should be selling it. There you go. That's exactly it. It literally is that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? If, 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 if a country is going into a recession, yeah, what should you mm -hmm. be doing to that currency? Selling it. There you go. That's exactly it. And if it, and then what you do is you say, all right, then on the on the flip side, where is the strongest currency? Because you're trying to remember trade divergences. So if one currency is going into recession, yeah. where is a where is a country that is going is 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 growing is booming or they're they're not growing, like, they're not they're not cutting it. rates. That's exactly it. So you go from yeah, there you yeah. go. And that is literally it. That's all we do as currency traders. That's all we do as currency traders. And if you, you know, anyone who calls themselves a currency, you're a trader, right? You're, you are a trader, right? If you can look at a price chart and you can just basically trade anything, yeah? And it makes me laugh. You know, when you hear, you, you hear, um, you hear, um, uh, I guess, um, traders say things like, oh, the, the, the GU is my favorite currency pair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they yeah, don't yeah, understand yeah. fundamentals. Yeah. It's like, how? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If, you could, if you took away, like, and if you took away, if you play someone, all right, so let's say, for example, let's go to a chart, yeah? Every technical analysis, every technical, um, one second, every chart, should be your favorite. Yeah? Every chart should be your favorite or not your favorite. Because when you think about it, if I, from a price, from a price perspective, so I'm just trying to clear certain things. Why won't it do it? All right, yeah. So from a price perspective, if I didn't know, if you take away the Australian dollar, US dollar, yeah? yeah. You wouldn't know whether this was a price of of flipping, um, I don't know, it could be anything. You wouldn't know okay. what it was. You wouldn't know what it was, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then when someone says that it's their favorite, yeah, because for example, something is trending. Oh, this is a trending market. This is my favorite. Beyond the price chart, yeah, beyond the price chart, you could have the central bank then say, okay, well, you know, we're looking to cut rates and then another one's looking to hike rates. And all of a sudden that that trend will change or let's say, for example, it will start to range because, um, you know, the, the, the central banks are maybe in agreement of where they think value is. They're, they're holding rates, yeah? And they're happy with where price is. Then all of a sudden their favorite pair, which was trending based off of just technical analysis, yeah? Now all of a sudden starts to range. 
then it starts, then it's, then it stops becoming their favorite pair, but they don't realize that until they start losing because they're thinking to themselves, hold on, this pair was trending, right? It's not trending anymore. Mm. Why isn't it trending? Mm. But you can predict. They're, they're, they're probably of, holding the, the, the interest rates. There you go, without hold. even knowing it. Without even yeah. knowing it, but they wouldn't know why a market is their favorite in the, fir- in the first place. And by the time mm. they see the trend, they're probably too late anyway. Yeah. They're probably buying at the middle of the trend or the top of the or, 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 or the top of the trend. Because I always say this, right? I'm always I'm always saying this to, to, to traders. This is this is the trading conundrum before I go. Yeah. Let's say we have a downtrend. And this is what trend traders and technical analysis traders will never admit to. They will never ever admit to this. If you go on YouTube, yeah, ask your favorite mm-hmm. trading, trading, trading uh, strategist, yeah. When does the trend end? So let's say, for example, you're in a, you're in a, or when, when do we see a reversal, right? Or when does this downtrend stop? Yeah. So let's say, for example, prices start to come up to here and they start to do something like this. Are we in an uptrend or a downtrend? Uh, usually with technical, as you break the, the lower high, and create a higher low. It's it seems like it's it's uh, trending up. It has changed direction. But why? This could just be yeah a deeper pullback, right? Yes, so, it could be the complex pullback as well. Yeah. So how do you know? Yeah, that, that's the thing. <laughs> you don't exa- exactly. It's very subjective, yeah. right? This could just yeah. be from this from this high to this low. Yeah. And it also depends on the time frame that you're trading because so people will trade on the one minute, the one hour, the one day, you know what I mean? The one week. So it's going to give you different, different perspectives. Right. So mm-hmm. somebody might say you're in a downtrend, but if you go up to a higher time frame, it actually might be an uptrend. Yeah. Yeah. But where does the trend end? Where does this trend, this could just be from this high to this low, this could just be a 38.2%. That's the most difficult question you can ask a, a, a technical trader. Exactly. But, what, but, but what, what, what do I know from a fundamental perspective? I know, yeah, and it's, it's beyond, it, it's not even debatable if there's a currency that is cutting rates and there's one that is hiking rates. There's no subjectivity around that, is it? Yeah, there's really not. If someone's going into a recession and the numbers come out, yeah, a country just gone into two negative quarters, yeah, minus one and then minus two, for example, with their GDP growth. Isn't there's no subjectivity around that, is there? Uh-huh. We're in a recession. So, regardless of what happens here on this price chart, what you should you be doing overall? Just looking at pullbacks to look to go short in the long in the in the medium to long term. This is clear as day. This, you can make up whatever it is in your head, you know, and there's no consistency there. There's none. There's absolutely no consistency. One day, it's a it's a downtrend. But if you go down to the one minute, it's an uptrend. But if you go up to the yeah. 10 minute, it's a downtrend. You know what I mean? And depending on mm-hmm. where you move your chart and, you know, where you start the, the, the trend from, and it's all subjective. Yeah, that's true. But this is not subjective. Yes, fundamentals have its has its challenges, right? It does have its has it has it has its challenges. It's not all you know <clears throat> smooth and clear all the time. Yeah, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say that. But once you understand this, and once you do have clear divergences as to which way you should be buying or selling. Yeah, or we're looking for pairs, mm-hmm. then this is this is where it becomes easier. And then you can have the, the faith that when prices pull back, you can just start to buy. If that level doesn't work, you just look for the lower level and you buy there. Et cetera, et cetera. And that's all you're doing. It, it actually it's gonna bring a lot of confidence with the direction because it's there you clear go. day. There you go. The, 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 the difficulty with fundamentals is, is filtering the noise. Yeah. It's filtering the noise and staying within 
the bubble of interest rates. So all roads lead lead back to interest rates, inflation, inflation. and GDP. GDP. Yeah? Yeah. And GDP. In fact, the market moves for three reasons. It will move because of value, which is basically what this is. So interest rates, inflation, and GDP are all basically telling you what the value of that currency is potentially is in comparison to another currency. So you compare inflation, interest yeah. rates and, in, and GDP to another country's inflation, interest rate and GDP. And then you decide whether, you know, the exchange rate value is a fair value, expensive or cheap, right? Yeah. Right. So number one is value. Number two is risk sentiment. Yeah. So risk on, risk off, row, row. Oh, yeah. Um, how do you see that it's risk on or risk off? Um, do right. you so, read it on an article or? Yeah, so, so you understand risk on and risk off basically from the risk environment that you're in. So risk on would be when, in, when an, extreme, an extreme version of risk off would be, would be coronavirus. So risk off is when there's fear, uncertainty, that's risk off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're not in, if we're not in that environment, or there's not that sentiment, you don't read that that sentiment, then we're more likely to be in risk on. Risk on. Yeah. Right. So when we're in a risk off environment, where does money flow into? Safe haven assets. Safe haven assets. Yeah. Like the Japanese yen, the Swiss franc. That's where they typically go. Yeah. We know where they go into and out of. Yeah. Okay. And then the third thing is liquidity. Yeah. Liquidity, liquid. These are the three things that move price. Price is manipulated. And once you understand these three things, and you can put these three things together, then you should always be able to succeed in the market in the medium to long term. Yeah. Short short term is more <clears throat> short term price is driven by liquidity. So when I say short term price, you know, we're talking about, you know, the lower, the really kind of lower time frames because of, you know, market makers, you've got big people, you know, the big banks trying to buy all at the same time. So there needs to be enough liquidity, yeah, in the market for yeah. them to, to to buy. Yeah. So short term price can be very erratic, yeah. Even week to week, you can see prices not do anything because or go okay. sideways. And that's what we know is the, what the accumulation phase, right? So we know, for example, you know, a country is hiking or cutting rates, yeah? And we want to trade, but yet price might go sideways for a very long time. And it's because in a sideways market, the central, uh, the, um, the, the, the banks and the big financial institutions are just accumulating. So they, they confuse traders with, you know, these, these structural levels so they can buy and they manipulate, manipulate, manipulate for days and weeks and sometimes even months mm. just so that they can accumulate enough because they understand that the value of the currency or asset, you know, should be higher, much higher or much lower. But by the ranging market, it's giving them time to accumulate. And then when once they've accumulated, they'll push prices to where they think you know, we'll, we'll go and then they can basically just, you know, uh, uh, take profit at certain, at certain areas, but short term price, whenever people talk about, oh, well, this happened and, you know, it was positive news, but yet prices are going down. It's because yeah. of liquidity because everybody can't be long and everybody can't be short. So what happens is, <clears throat> well, what can happen is that when you get positive news, yeah, and the market goes the other way, it's because it was searching for the liquidity, which if there's not enough liquidity to the upside, if I want to be a buyer and there's not enough sell orders above me to facilitate my buying, then I'm going to look for sell orders below the market. And I'm going to, you know, hoover that up. I'm going to take out that liquidity and it allows me to buy at a cheaper price. Yeah, buy down here rather than buying up here, right? And then what I can do, once I start, you know, to buy at lower prices, then I can drive prices to where I want to drive them. But these are the three things, value, 
which is driven obviously by determined by fundamentals, risk on and risk off sentiment and liquidity. Beyond that, there's literally nothing else. The market moves for no other reason. It doesn't move because there's a pin bar. Yeah. And before I go, before I do go, think about this. Yeah. There's, I think there's something like maybe 10 banks or 10 financial institutions have a, have a Forex market share of around um, something like 50 to 60%. Yeah. They have a market share. So basically 10, about 10, 11, 12 banks control 50 percent of the market and there are you know there are hundreds of, there are thousands of market participants yeah so if 10 percent yeah. the top 10 banks are controlling 50 percent these guys cannot be looking cannot be looking at price action can they because they're the ones that are creating the price action. They're creating the pin bars. They're creating the engulfing patterns. They're creating the, the, the support and resistance and supply and demand zones. They're creating it. So, they, so what are they looking towards if they're looking to buy something? They can't look towards price action because they're the ones creating the price yeah. action, right? Yeah. Which means they have to be looking at something else. Yeah. And it can only be fundamental analysis, inflation, interest rates, risk sentiment. That's it. Yeah. If anything is most traders, uh, we know that the money is moved by the central bank uh, traders, not, not like retail traders. And yeah, it's, exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. You're right. It's moved by those guys. And yes, I think people, generally traders want um, instant gratification. They want, um, you know, something, someone to say, oh, they're cutting rates. Price should go down right now because I'm in this trade and I've pressed, I've, I've pressed sell or I've gone long and prices should go up right now. No, that's not how it works. If, if, if there's a thousand banks that see the same thing, yeah, and they understand they all want to get in. They all want to get in at the same time. So they don't, they don't want to buy with everyone else. So what they'll do is they will manipulate the market and they will take their time. Yeah, they will take their time to accumulate. Sometimes, yes, you'll see prices start to, you know, there will a big order will come in and prices will trend, right? There are times when that happens. Of course, it happens like that, yeah? But in general, in general, you're, 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 the banks are not silly, right? There needs to be enough liquidity in the market. And if there's not enough liquidity, then the market will, you know, maybe go higher, draw traders into the upside and then stop them out and create their, you know, take the liquidity out on them, draw traders in short, and then, you know, manipulate the market to the point where overall, over maybe two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten 10 months, 11 months, you'll see this. But during day to day, you know, for the day trader who wants to make money today and if prices are going down, but he will say, oh, but the central bank said that they were cutting rates. That means that, you know, or, or hiking rates, which means that prices should go up, but it's going down today or it's going down this week. Oh, that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. That's nonsense. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. <laughs> because they're so, they're so short-sighted and don't understand how the game works for the medium to long term that they just totally disregard fundamental analysis for the long term. And this is where the path of least resistance actually is. Yes. Um, one last question before you go. Ne? Yeah. Um, I saw on the sheets, ne, there's uh, year on year, quarter on quarter, mm -hmm. uh, month to month. Mm -hmm. Do they also just uh, produce these uh, interest rates, GDPs on a monthly basis and quarter basis and year to year? Um, they, they generally do um, because the, 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 the more leading indicator would be month to month, right? If you're measuring inflation month to month rather than quarter to quarter, yes. So you can kind of see where the, the, the projection is going if you're measuring inflation in the short term. You can see more short term trends, which should lead to longer term trends. So okay. it, it is important to keep an eye on, um, you know, 
but but in general, you know, the, the, what we have on our fundamental analysis spreadsheet is good enough. All right. So is it based on that the, the spreadsheet itself? I saw number one is NZD uh, JPY. Yeah. Is that based on a monthly uh, or quarter? Um, that's just based on on the data that we have. So it's based on the monthly and the quarterly. So it's current data. So.